Hello and welcome to Startup Day 2021. My name is Rose Marley. I am the CEO of Cooperatives UK. I'm here to give you some food for thought about whether the cooperative business model is right for your business. Um, but there's possibly a question that you're asking, what actually is a co-op? Um, and in quick answer to that, I'm going to say it's UK's best kept secret, best kept business secret. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what cooperatives are and how effective they are in specific sectors. So what actually is a cooperative? Well, a cooperative is a business that is owned and controlled by its members. And its members can be, for example, the employees of the business in a worker co-op. It could be the tenants of a housing association. It could be the customers of a shop. Um, you could have three members or you could have three million members. Um, cooperatives also are able to run and operate within most legal forms of business. So a cooperative might be a limited company. It might be a community interest company. It might be a community benefit society, a charitable trust. And that's one of the challenges about cooperatives. It's not like going to company's house and just setting up uh, the business in a very standard way. But it is also the opportunity. The bottom line is whatever you and your members want to achieve with the business, there will be a cooperative structure that can enable that. And when I say that, you know, there are cooperative pubs, energy suppliers, taxi firms, bookshops, gardens, wine cellars, farmers and sports clubs. And of course, you probably all know the co-op, the shop at the end of your street. So why then uh, are cooperatives uh, slightly different? It's they operate within these different legal structures and they're owned by the members, but they also operate on some principles and values that make a cooperative business different from other types of businesses. So those principles are that cooperatives are a democratic way of running a business. So however those members are set up, and like I say, they could be tenants of a housing association, but you can also have multi-stakeholder cooperatives where you've got the tenants of the housing association and the owners of the building as well. The bottom line is that cooperatives tend to operate on one member, one voice principles, which means everybody gets to have a, a say. Cooperatives principles also include independence. They can't be part of another group, part of another business in that respect. Again, part of the principles of cooperation are that you do educate and train your members and that you do collaborate. Uh, one of the principles, principle number six, is about cooperating and working with other cooperatives. And a big principle is around having care for your community. Um, as well as the principles of a cooperative, there are 10 core values in a cooperative. Uh, they include caring for others, democracy we've spoken about, equity, equality, honesty, openness, self-help, self-responsibility, solidarity and social responsibility. And we don't need to get really caught up in all those details. The point is when you go to set up a co-op, you can work through all this and some of those principles will be really important to your cooperative and some of those values will be absolutely why you exist and some less so. And this is why I'm saying cooperative business, whatever you're trying to achieve, if you're trying to trade in a fair and equitable way and make an impact in, for example, your community or with your members, there will be a cooperative business model and structure that will work for you. Um, so just in terms of the actual cooperative um, economy, um, I'm just going to talk you through uh, now what that looks like, because as, as we briefly touched on, most people know the co-op as a shop where you might get your carrots and milk from. And a lot of people don't understand that when you get your little co-op card from your local co-op shop, whichever kind of co-op that is, because again, they can all be different. It means as a customer, you get to have a say in some really significant matters at the AGM um, every year. But as well as the co-op, the shop, you will also find that there are a whole host of other sectors, some of which I've just me mentioned. 
What is really key, though, about cooperatives and why they're as relevant as they ever were, and when I say as they ever were, the first cooperative in the UK started 176 years ago, and that was uh, the shop. Um, but what is proven um, in current business is that cooperatives are really resilient. So in the pandemic, we have something called the Co-op Economy Report, which you can see there, and you can hashtag and, and Google that if you want to find out more. But throughout the pandemic, cooperatives have been four times more resilient than uh, other types of business formats and, and less likely to go under. Um, cooperatives are really ambitious. Small co-ops are markedly more ambitious than small businesses generally. They're effective. They have clear benefits so around the pandemic. You know, for example, the worker and freelancer cooperatives, the way people approach things like furlough it was very different to how a maybe more hierarchical business might have been uh, developed. And that's been borne out in the fact that we saw a growth in the number of co-ops starting through the pandemic at 1.2%. Uh, um, and again, let's say we had 84% more cooperative businesses starting in uh, 20, uh, 2021 um, than we actually had uh, cooperatives ceasing to trade. You know, it is growing. Um, the cooperative movement has grown by over a billion in the last year alone. And that many of our co-ops in that report say that being a co-op was beneficial during the pandemic. And that's because they've got often a strong and loyal membership to draw on. So actually, when I say it grew by one billion, the whole cooperative economy in the UK is worth 40 billion to the UK economy. So that is not insignificant. And you can see there some of the areas and sectors that they work in, obviously dominated there by retail at 28.4 billion. But you can see some of those other sectors that are really growing and developing, like housing. And even though it's only quite small at the moment, digital and media at 6.9 million that's an area that is really producing some exciting opportunities which i'm going to go on to talk about so i just wanted to give you some examples of, of cooperatives and areas that they work in particularly well and i'm going to start with energy cooperatives given this being the year of cop 26 and a real focus on climate change um, but communities come together really well within the business cooperative structure particularly around renewable energy so uh, one of the images uh, you can see there are from co-pilot wind project in Wales. And what they did was they used uh, a share offer for people to co-own part of a wind farm, which supplies homes through the national grid. So you don't have to live in Wales even to be a member of the co-pilot wind uh, cooperative and have a renewable energy source supplying your um, house. Uh, another example would be the North Kensington Community Energy Cooperative, which installs solar panels using funds raised through, again, the community share issue. And um, the Mid-Counties Cooperative, which has been established almost as, as, as long as uh, the cooperative group, uh, 175 years there. Um, but they've now got a joint venture with Octopus Energy um, called Unity, and it's the only tariff in the UK which is powered solely by community-generated electricity. So again, the Mid-Counties Cooperative, it's a consumer co-op, so it's owned uh, by the customers of the Mid-Counties Cooperative. And then they've got this joint venture now with uh, Octopus Energy. And it's really interesting the way some of those um, cooperatives work. So Mid-Counties Cooperative and the Cooperative Group um, they uh, directly re link remuneration of their senior executives to the achievement of their ambitious carbon reduction targets. This brings it right back to those values that we were talking about, caring for your community. And that's why you'll find, and as highlighted in our work ahead of COP26, um, that cooperatives do tend to be concerned with things like uh, climate change. So we did release a report. Two thirds of uh, cooperatives do have a net zero action plan, which is higher than business generally. You know, it seems that cooperatives are really punching above their weight in this field, considering that just 30% of the UK's FTSE 100 companies have pledged to eliminate their carbon emissions by 2025. Um, despite being much larger in size, we've also seen the very first um, biodegradable 
plastic carrier bag coming from the cooperative group. You've got organisations like Green City Whole Foods up in Glasgow that have changed all their deliveries to electric tracks. So we really do push the boundaries in some of these concerns and considerations that not just the UK, but, you know, the, the world is facing. And um, that's what cooperatives do really well and always have done really well is supply answers, fair and equitable answers to trade in broken markets. And another broken market that we've got is, is, is housing. You know, there's a real need for more um, housing co-ops. But again, I just wanted to give you some examples of some of the housing co-ops that are doing really well and being really effective. Um, now, one of the um, cooperatives that you can see there uh, is actually based on uh, the, an area in southeast Glasgow. In fact, that's not a picture you can see because it's six tower, block, six tower blocks in Cambuslang in the southeast of Glasgow. It's a real success story and it started 30 years ago. Um, and those tower blocks have now become part of a housing cooperative uh, where, as I say, the tenants themselves own those uh, that housing cooperative um, but because they are a cooperative it's not just about uh, fixing the, 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 the toilets and making sure that facade uh, health and, and, and safety it also means that you do things like tackle antisocial behavior because again you turn to the values and principles of why the cooperative exists to deliver the change you want to see in their area but the reason I wanted to point this one out is a, as a brilliant example of how successful it is is because it's these Whitlaw burn tower blocks are the comparison tower blocks uh, to West Whitlaw burn. Um, and they didn't convert to a co-op uh, 30 years ago. And now sadly they're due to be demolished due to low demand and poor conditions. So there's a real like-for-like comparison there about how a ho housing cooperative might enable not just better building conditions, but better living conditions and general health and well-being, health and well-being considerations for the community that exists. Um, again, we've got Leeds uh, Community Homes. They've got more community-led, sustainable and affordable homes in Leeds and beyond. We're supporting the Student Housing Cooperative. Uh, you know, when you live away from home for the first time, what a great way to learn how to actually ultimately eventually manage your own house. Uh, you know, so not only is it much cheaper than the properties run by the commercial landlords for a student, but you get this real sense of responsibility because the students themselves are responsible for making decisions about the repairs and what needs to be done to operate that housing cooperative successfully. Um, so again, one of the areas I did want to touch on uh, was tech and what we call platform cooperatives because again this is a real growth area for the cooperative movement and when I was talking about those principles earlier something about the way that the principles work really effectively with tech and, and apps in effect and um, because if you apply those principles you get some really interesting ideas so an example would be resonate um, cooperative which is an ethical music streaming platform and because the artists are it's a multi-stakeholder cop but because the artists are some of the members well you'll be unsurprised to know that the artists do actually get paid uh, a lot more than uh, they would do on other streaming services in fact there was a dcms quite inquiry into music streaming ethics um in 2021 and resonate was uh, was held up as an example of a really way to actually make sure that artists do get paid through that streaming technology. Um, another uh, organisation, uh, Wings, um, so they're a recently formed cooperative um, who work in ethical food delivery in North London, and actually they're former delivery uh, riders and, and, and cyclists who have set up their own cooperative to deliver food. Well, of course, they've got much better working conditions and a lot more say in the business than they would have had otherwise. So the tech and platform uh, cooperatives are really growing. Other examples would be Signalize, which again, it's a multi-stakeholder cop. So members are not just the deaf community, uh, but it's the sign language interpreters as well. So you've got these dual memberships so that both of the considerations for the workers and the people that are uh, receiving the service are being um, heard in a way that is effective uh, to deliver it of those services. Um, so at Cooperatives UK, we do have a programme, the Unfound programme, which is funded by the Cooperative Bank, and you can visit us at unfound.coop. 
Um, but that also um, is a way for, you know, if you've got an idea, you might already be running a cooperative or you might be thinking of starting one. Um, and you don't need to be techie to come on that programme at all. It's about realising the potential of putting those values and principles into a tech application to trade in a more fair and equitable way. Um, social care, there's another broken market for you. And what cooperatives are not is some sort of silver bullet for you know, some of the challenges that we've got in social care. So in social care, it was recently announced that we need to raise national insurance to cover the cost the rising cost of, of social care. And actually, until you know the cost of social care is realized through things like the local authorities, uh, you know, those that that cannot be fixed. However, in areas where it's doing really, really well, uh, Yorkshire is doing particularly well actually in social care co -op. So you've got the B Caring, which is the residential care cooperative. So again, you know, the actual residents being able to have a, 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 an effect and their voices. Uh, be heard but again a really exciting tech cooperative called the equal care cooperative where the actual uh, care workers as well as the people who are receiving the care are the joint uh, members of that cooperative so of course if you work for equal care co-op you know you've got time to travel to get to your appointments you've got maybe only six clients to see a week compared to maybe 20 or 30 clients and of course, and the people booking the care know that the person providing the care is arriving on site in a way that they're ready and able to do their job. So you can begin to see where these are making a real difference and there's a real opportunity in this uh, sector. Now, one thing that I did say about uh, cooperatives being the UK's uh, greatest business secret, and I've mentioned it a couple of times, is this community shares. Now, community shares are a really unique way for cooperative businesses to raise finance. Now, that might be at startup or that might be for growth, um, but it is only available through the Financial Conduct Authority and Cooperatives UK's community shares unit. Um, it is only available to cooperatives. And the easiest way to describe it is like crowdfunding, but where you get to own a bit of the, the, the business at the end of it. Um, so cooperative uh, businesses have been used a lot to save or set up community assets. So there's a lot of community shares using pubs, skate parks, swimming pools, um, or it can, as I said, community shares can be uh, enabled to launch a new service. Um, so investments can start at as little as £10 to, in your community share offer. And we've seen community share offers be as high as £100 thousand pound um, and again when I talk about broken markets and things that need fixing um, we've seen an increase of um, football clubs actually community football clubs becoming fan led um, and issuing share offers that enables them to be owned by the fans and then do things like in the case of with Insure FC build a new stand and sort out the drainage on the car park as well so this community shares piece is really really important because the social investment market is a real challenging market. But if you are a cooperative or a community benefit uh, society, you know, you can raise money for your business in this way. I guess the key thing to say is, you know, if you uh, want to be able to set up a business to make yourself loads of money that you'll keep to yourself forever, then a cooperative business is not for you. All cooperatives do two things. They distribute power by that democratic process. They distribute the decision-making power to their members and they distribute the, the wealth amongst those members, which anchors it in the community. So it really is um, a very um, important way to be able to do business if you're looking at the business impact on the local community. And the reason I say that is important is because, you know, let's just look at the moment at the times that we are in. And, and, and I do, you know, I'm fairly new into Cooperatives UK 2021. I was appointed. Um, and, and my big question was, why doesn't everybody know about this amazing opportunity of how to run a business? You probably weren't told if you did business studies at school, you probably didn't know. Um, or understand the cooperative model and it's not very well exposed which is why we're delighted to be here at Startup Day with the British Library to talk to you about it but as well what Covid did do was that it exposed 
exposed the inequalities in the UK. Um, it really did shine a light on how broken some of those businesses are and some of the priorities we put. Um, it was great to see, actually, in the pandemic that the cooperative group made a decision to make sure that all of their workers were getting, uh, at the very least, real living wage, recognising how important those workers were to the communities throughout the pandemic. Um, so the, what COVID did for this business model and for the cooperative movement was not only just expose the inequalities, but create a real empathy with mutality, you know, people working together. When I say, what is a cooperative? You can have a co-op that doesn't make any money at all. You know, it's just people coming together with one end, with one focus. So I certainly feel like our local neighbourhood WhatsApp group became like a co-op. And I'm sure many people also experienced that in COVID, how important the people around you became and that locality and working together to a joint end, whether that was to make sure that all the neighbours were on the street were okay or that uh, people were able to uh, share um, the opportunity when they were, for example, uh, you know, going to, to the shops, it really did produce this working together to produce an effective end. But actually what COVID also did was accelerate tech. So if you'd have said, you know, we've got, to, you know, we've got two weeks to be doing our banking systems from people's houses, the banking world would have said absolutely no way, that'll take 20 years, you know. The amount of times, look at us now, you know, doing this session, uh, you know, all by uh, the power of uh, Zoom. So it really did accelerate tech and, and working from home. But what was already happening and why this is important is because we were already on a journey. We were already at Industry 4.0, as it's often known. It's the industrial revolution uh, revisited, but in a tech and digital Sort of way and this is absolutely happening and I can't be more vocal about how I need you to come away understanding as potential business leaders how pivotal this next decade is going to be for mankind it's going to transform the way we live work and consume and I truly believe that the cooperative model that's been disrupting and challenging business models for over 175 years if you apply some of those principles of the past they will become the guiding lights for our future and actually where in countries you know like uh, Finland for example that's got you know 80 percent of, of of all the residents of Finland are members of uh, a cooperative you know you do get these more fair and equitable um ways of trading and living and working so at the point where the, all this change is happening, I'm delighted to say we've got a real tried and tested model that works for businesses that want to affect those changes and want to share and distribute that power and, and wealth that we're talking about. Uh, just to give you a little bit of context about what we're talking about when I say the world's about to be turned upside down and Industry 4.0 is coming and like when the cooperative movement started at the beginning of the original industrial revolution and, and, and what that changed and what enabled, uh, just to give you a, an idea relating um, the idea of, of the human body and, and, and the human mind to the technological changes that are coming. So if you think about artificial intelligence as your brain actually um, and actually, you know, all the predictions are that artificial intelligence will be at human level by 2030. You know, it's less than a decade away. It's significant. Um, that's coming. That's happening. Again, if you think about, for example, the way we view things, we're going to hit something called sometimes called the spatial web. So all those movies you've seen uh, over the years with all that tech and everything's around you in screens, whether it's in your glasses or it's how you. Uh, relate that spatial web is coming the internet of things is coming um so whether it's virtual reality augmented reality mixed reality the way we see things and the enhanced capability of the data that will be provided within our vision is coming um again uh, if you think about blockchain as your memory now blockchain is an infinite almost unhackable way to collect loads and loads and loads and loads of infinite information it is a memory it will remember everything um again if you start to think about this in your business context and what that can do you have that um, opportunity and um, then you have your automation 
uh, which is, is the way your, your hands and arms would work and your robotics. And adding to that, the nanotechnology, you know, tiny weeny uh, capability of technology, which will transform energy and health in particular. So you put all that together and you can see what's coming in the world and you start to realise some of the challenges that we've got and some of the opportunities. We are going to completely transform the way we live, work and consume. Businesses will be at the forefront of that. I'm here to make sure cooperative businesses are at the forefront of that uh, too. Um, so if you are suitably uh, engaged to want to find out more about this very special type of business called a cooperative, there's loads and loads of access and resources uh, in our business support program, which you can see there at www.uk.coop slash start. You can contact our experts, advice, um, advice at uk.coop. Uh, we have a program called The Hive, which again is supported by the Cooperative Bank, where ideas are turned into plans. So if you've got an idea, you've no idea how to actually progress it into a business plan, a cooperative business plan, you can apply to The Hive for support to be able to do that with experts and consultants and um, community shares. Like I said, you know, if you're a kind of organisation that needs to raise money to start up or needs to raise money to grow, you can convert, you might already be a community interest company, you might already be a type of business that would like to convert to a member-based business and enable your share offer. We can help you with that. We can also help you, like I say, if you've got ideas about how you might want to start a tech cooperative with the Unfound uh, program, Tech Accelerator, that we do, that we run. And also just started trialing in Sheffield. Uh, we've got an ambition working with the Employee Ownership Association to get one million business uh, owners and the ownership hub we've started working on in Sheffield. So if your local nightclub is under threat or your local pub, why not consider taking it over as the customer's or if you've got, say, a business that you want to convert into an employee ownership model so that you get this resilience piece, you get your workers more engaged in the way the business operates, we can help you with that. And again, that's through something called the, the Ownership Hub, which has a whole host of resources and capability. Um, so I am, as I've said, uh, Rose Marley. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. And I would be very, very pleased to hear about your stories if today indeed we have inspired you to start up or develop a cooperative business model. If just one person does that, do let me know at some point in the future. We'd be delighted to hear from you. And thanks for your time.